ever get lost in a rabbit hole of forum posts, like trying to figure out an upgrade for your car? Oh, tell me about it. You click one link, right? Thinking, this is it. This is the answer. Yeah. And then next thing you know, three hours have passed. <laughs> right, right. And you're wading through this sea of conflicting advice and jargon that only makes sense to like the forum elite. Yeah, you start questioning if you even know what you're doing anymore. Exactly. Well, today we're tackling one of those upgrades that's famous for this kind of forum frenzy. Oh, is it now? Upgrading the infotainment system on a 2015 Golf Sportwagon STDI, going from that older MIB-1 to the, let's face it, way cooler MIB-2. Ah, a classic upgrade, especially for anyone who's ever looked at their car's dash and thought, I really want Android Auto or Apple CarPlay in there. Precisely. But, and this is a big but. There's always a but. It can come with a pretty hefty price tag, especially if you're relying on dealerships or those fancy professional installations. Yeah, those bills can add up quickly. But what if I told you there's a method out there, all documented in a single forum post, that promises a much simpler and get this way cheaper way to do it yourself? Okay, now you've got my attention. Mm -hmm. Simpler and cheaper. That's a pretty enticing combination. Right. And what's really cool about this method is that it completely bypasses the need for those expensive coding tools and software that usually go hand in hand with these kinds of upgrades. So we're talking real DIY ingenuity here, finding those clever workarounds that the pros don't want you to know about. Exactly. This isn't just some vague, here's an idea type of guide either. It's laser focused on the 2015 Golf Sportwagon STDI, lays out everything you need. And I'm talking impressive detail here. Specific parts lists, I'm guessing. Oh, you know it. And the best part is that most of what you need, you can snag for under $100. Music to my ears. So you'll need a 6.5-inch screen, a Delphi head unit, ideally from a 2017 S model Golf, to keep things simple, a compatible USB port, and believe it or not, a 4GB SD card. A 4GB SD card. Mm. Proof that sometimes the solutions to our high-tech problems are hidden in that drawer full of old electronics. Isn't that the truth? I actually found one in mine while I was prepping for this. I knew it. You and me both. But what really threw me was that this method doesn't even need a new wiring harness. Instead of shelling out even more cash, this forum post walks you through this super clever pin swapping technique, all with your existing harness. Now, that's what I call resourceful. Using what you've already got. Love it. It's like finding that hidden shortcut in a video game, you know? Oh, totally. Skipping that frustrating level everyone hates. Exactly. And speaking of bypassing things, this upgrade actually fixes that annoying rotating volume no knob issue. You know, the one with the power logo spins along with it. That's the one. And this forum post takes care of it. It's a two for one deal. Yeah. An upgrade that fixes another annoyance. I'm sold. So we've got this older MIB-1 system in our 2015 Golf Sport Wagon. Yeah. And it does the, you know, the basic things you'd expect, but... It's not exactly setting the world on fire, is it? Exactly. It's definitely not the smartest cookie in the jar. A fair assessment. MIB-1 gets the job done, but yeah, it lacks a lot of the bells and whistles we expect in modern cars. Yeah. MIB-2. Now, that's a different story. That's where it's at. The MIB-2 system opens up a whole world of possibilities. Right. Mainly because it finally brings Android Auto and Apple CarPlay into the mix. That's the real game changer. I mean, who wants to be stuck with some clunky old infotainment system when you can have your smartphone, like, mirrored on your dashboard. Let's talk about an upgrade. Seriously. Seamless integration, everything's easy to use. With MIB2, you've got navigation, music streaming, hands-free calling. It's like night and day. A whole app store right there mm -hmm. at your fingertips, all while you're focused on driving, of course. Safety first. Yeah. But, okay, so the why is pretty clear. We want this upgrade for a better, safer, and let's be honest, way more fun driving experience. Now, what I love about this forum post is it breaks the entire upgrade process down into six very manageable steps. Nice. And not only that, but the original poster is super active in the comments. He's added all these extra little tips and tricks that other people have found while they're doing this. See, that's what I love about the online DIY community. It's all about sharing and helping each other out. Right. It's like having a whole team of virtual mechanics cheering you on every step of the way. Now, before we dive into the actual steps, there's this one thing that tends to trip people up with infotainment upgrades, and it's a little something called component protection. Yeah, that one always causes some head scratching. It sounds intimidating, right? It does sound a little bit like a security system designed to keep us tinkerers out. Yeah. But really, component protection is just VW's way of, you know, making sure that only authorized components are installed in their cars. So when you swap out something like a head unit, 
the system, it knows. It detects that change and, well, basically it locks down certain features until it can verify that what you've put in there is actually legit. So it's like your car is giving you the side eye and saying, hold on a minute, I see what yeah. you did there. You better prove it's on the up and up before I let you play with your fancy new toys. Exactly. Now, usually to get around component protection, you'd have to make a trip to the dealership. Oh, the dealership. Yeah, and they'd use their, you know, their special tools, their software to authenticate the new part. But, and this is where this deep dive gets really, really good, this forum post, it actually tells you how to disable component protection yourself. Wait a minute, hold on. Are you saying we can outsmart the system without even setting foot in a dealership? You heard that right. No dealership visits, no expensive fees. Okay, now you're speaking my language. Tell me more. So this forum post, it walks you through how to use some specific software, right, and some scripts. Okay. And this basically modifies a really important file on the new head unit. This modify file, it basically removes that component protection check so your car just accepts the upgrade without throwing a fit. Hold on, hold on. We're talking about diving into the software here. We are. That sounds a little more intense than just swapping out some hardware. How comfortable does someone need to be with this sort of thing before they even think about attempting this method? That's a really good point. Yeah. And you're right. The forum post lays everything out clearly. But it is a point where having even just a basic understanding of software versions, how to handle files, eh. it definitely helps. Okay. The real key here is making sure you download the correct delphibon.ss file. That's the file we're going to modify. And to do that, you need to know your specific software version. Got it. So no downloading random files from shady corners of the internet. Got to be careful about that kind of thing. Exactly. This isn't the time to throw caution to the wind. But what exactly is this delphibon.ifs file? So think of the delphibon.ifs file as like the brain of your infotainment system. Okay. It has all the instructions, all the configurations that tell the system how to behave, how to do its thing. Right. And when we replace it with that modified version, we're essentially rewriting a small part of those instructions. Just that little bit that triggers the component protection. It's like finding that one line of code in a video game that controls invincibility. You tweak it and boom, you're unstoppable. I love that analogy. And it's true, right? Yeah. Just like in a game, using the wrong file or messing up the modification. Yeah, that can have some seriously unintended consequences. Yeah, no pressure, right? Exactly. That's why this forum post really stresses the importance of downloading the right delphibon.ifs for your software version. And it gives you links to some really reputable sources where you can find them. And it really is like we're doing brain surgery, but instead of a scalpel, we're using lines of code. In a way, yeah. It's amazing what you can do with a little bit of know-how these days. It's empowering, right, to know that you can unlock these advanced features without having to hand over your car to the dealership. It's all thanks to these incredible online communities, sharing knowledge, making this stuff accessible. Exactly. But you're right, it does require some attention to detail, to say the least. Yeah, definitely. This isn't something you want to rush into blindly. Which is where those reliable sources you mentioned come in. Exactly. The forum post, it specifically points to sites like MibSolution.1. Have you ever used that one? Oh, yeah. MibSolution.1 is a gold mine of information, if you're even remotely interested in VW infotainment systems. It seems like it. I mean, they have everything. Oh, wow. You can find the correct delphibon.fs files there. There are forums, tutorials. They even have a Telegram group for real-time help. So if you get stuck, you're not alone. That's so key, having that lifeline, especially for a newbie. Because let's be honest, I would totally panic if I saw a cryptic error message. Oh, absolutely. We've all been there. Speaking of newbies, this forum post, it's gotten some awesome feedback from people who've used this method. And that's what makes this deep dive so cool. Yeah. We're not just theorizing. Yeah. This stuff works. Right. Real people, real results. Exactly. There's one comment that stood out to me. This guy, he said this forum post saved him hundreds of dollars. Okay. And a trip to the dealership, yeah. which, I mean, come on, that's a win in itself. Huge win. And then he goes on to say, and I quote, it works like a charm. I now have wireless car play in my 2015 Golf, and it feels like a brand new car. Music to my ears. <laughs> That's exactly what we like to hear, that feeling of, I did it myself and it actually worked. It really is like breathing new life into your car, you know, giving it that technological glow up. It's so satisfying, right, that sense of accomplishment when you do something yourself. Totally. But like with any DIY project, you've really got to go in with a clear understanding of the process, the risks, and of course, having those resources handy. Preparation is key. So for our listeners who've been with us this whole way, 
What would you say is the most important takeaway from this whole deep dive? I think what we've really seen here is just how accessible these more advanced car upgrades have become. And mm -hmm. it's all thanks to those online communities out there sharing their knowledge and experience. It's pretty amazing. This forum post we've been looking at, it's a perfect example. It really is. It provides such a detailed roadmap for something that might have seemed impossible or like ridiculously expensive before. But having said that, it also shows just how important thorough research and preparation are. And a healthy dose of caution never hurts either. It's like setting off on a challenging hike. You want to make sure you've got the right gear, you know the trail, and maybe have a map or two handy. Real that analogy. You might hit a few bumps along the way, but hey, that's all part of the adventure, right? Exactly. And sometimes having that support system, like those online communities we were talking about, it can be the difference between reaching the summit or turning back. Or, in our case, enjoying your fully upgraded infotainment system. And on that note, we'll leave you with this little thought. While this forum post definitely offers a potentially simpler path to MIB2, just how simple it is depends on how comfortable you are with tech, how willing you are to roll up your sleeves and dive into the world of car software. So weigh those pros and cons, be honest about your skills, and most importantly, enjoy the journey. Happy upgrading, everyone. See you in the next deep dive.